Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show, I'm joined by singer-songwriter Melody Carr, who's based here in Birmingham. I'm also joined by Barry Tomes from Gotham Records, who talks to us about the record industry and what's happening in it. guest today is Melody Carr, singer-songwriter, joins us all the way from Birmingham, which is not a million miles away from our studio. So, Melody, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining <laughs> us on Copper TV. So, Melody, from Birmingham, but I understand you've just recently just moved to London. Yeah, yes. yeah, just to be a bit closer to music, yes. really, so change of scenery. <laughs> now, tell us about how did it all begin for you, Melody? Um, well, my mum always used to say I could sing before I could uh, put a sentence together. Um, and I've just always loved singing. Like, I've grown up around a musical family. My nan was really into, like, the Motown classics. My mum sang a bit of soul. My uncle was in a rock band. Oh my my granddad can play every instrument. So I was influenced, like, really heavily in influenced by a big group of musical people. Um, and I guess from that, it's always been in my blood, mm. I guess. I should think uh, so. You yeah. my music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it started off, actually, I used to sing, my nan would, like, play the piano and I'd sing along with her, like a bit of Stevie Wonder or a bit of Diana Ross. Um, and I didn't really want to be a soloist. I just sort of was like a bedroom singer along with my nan playing the piano. Um, and then it just got to a point as I got older, I thought, you know, I, I want to do it properly now. Mm. So, yes. And did like, your family encourage you, I should imagine? Yeah, 100%. Yes. I guess because it's been like something that they've done all the time, like my mum was singing from when she was a teenager. I grew up like around the studio, around people doing gigs. So I was like, oh, me next. My yes. turn. <laughs> but I mean, it is a hard lifestyle. People forget that the music industry, yeah. it's very harsh. It it's is. a harsh and hard lifestyle, isn't it? You have to be in the right mind frame. Like so many people can turn around and say, no, you're not good enough. And with like the amount of amazing artists that are out there at the moment, it's so easy to be like, oh my gosh, like I'm never gonna be as good as you, but you just can't really compare yourself and just be you and do your own thing, which is, I guess, what which I'm is what you doing. Do. Yeah. So Melody, if you were to sort of describe yourself as to like yourself to another singer, who would you say that you sound like? Or who would you say that you sort of aspire? Who's, who's, who's somebody that you really look up to in the singing world? Um, my sound is very much Motown, so I guess from my nan's sort of inspirations, I love a bit of like Diana Ross, The Supremes, Stevie Wonder, Dusty Springfield, but then can't, I love a bit of Beyonce as well, like I grew up <laughs> listening to Destiny's Child, yeah. so I guess I've, I'm taking like yeah. a bit of modern music and making it a bit, m sorry, Motown making it a bit modern. And so. is that what you're doing with your, with your songs at the moment? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, the sort of vibe is like a modern Motown-esque type and Is that quite sound. important to you to get that to keep that sort of Motown sound with I, you? Yeah I think it's quite good to bring a sound back like at the moment obviously music goes in different directions all the time so it's quite nice to bring a sound back that perhaps people haven't heard for quite a while like I know Megan Trainor's doing it at the moment so yes yeah, yeah funny enough Motown the... seems to have just suddenly sort of crept back into crept the back scene in. yeah, good timing it? well done that's <laughs> you got that one right <laughs> yeah so Melody when you're when you're because you write as well don't you I but do, you perform yeah. songs with other with other people you perform other people's songs I should yes, say that's right at the moment you? the second single I did sort of uh, co-write a little bit with so but yeah and do you like that as well? Do you like writing the songs? I love writing, yeah. There's so much to write about. Like, I take inspiration from everything. Like, I'll be at the train station and I'll see something and be like, oh, that could be in a song. Yes. So, yeah. Do you have <laughs> your little notebook with you all the time just to write uh, I've got. Down? I record on my phone. Oh, do voice you? Notes. Yeah. I'll be like, if I have, like, a melody, I'll be like, mm. that's, that's me so old-fashioned, saying, we just take a little notebook. <laughs> no, I record it. Fair, when I'm writing, yeah. I do get my pen and paper yeah. out. Yeah. I was going to say, when you write, do you do, you do it on a computer or do you pen, pen and paper? paper. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not mm. a typer. Uh, yeah. can't do it. There's a lot of writers though, authors as well. They still go to pen and paper, yeah, even though yeah. we've got all this wonderful technology, uh, you know, amongst us. But it's easier, and when you go wrong, you can just scribble out mm. rather than being like, oh, blank yes. space. Yeah. And <laughs> so you take your inspiration really then from everyday life. Yes. Yeah. yeah everyday life and everyday occurrences and everyday sort of genre, like all genres as well. Mm. So when you were growing up, when did you first sort of uh, start? Did you study music at school or anything like that? Um, 
No, I the first time I really got into singing, obviously I sang, as I said, like yes, along with yes. my nan. I then uh, was a member of Birmingham Community Gospel Choir Wonderful. from like 16 until I was about 18. Um, oh, tell us about that. So it was just like rehearse every Wednesday. My mum got me into it because my mum, um, obviously quite solely, and she's in on the music, so she found out about mm -hmm. it. Um, and we did like quite a few little gigs from that and I think that's when I started to become more confident because obviously I was a bedroom singer with my nan yes. to <laughs> singing, yeah, yeah, to singing like with a big group yes. of people with strangers at first which can be quite intimidating mm. but then obviously I lot, sort of found my voice mm. even more so then. And did you enjoy doing the gospel singing? Oh, I absolutely singing? loved it, yeah. yeah. I mean, again, that's a real soulful yeah. sound, isn't it, to have yeah, a gospel yeah. choir. Is it something you still continue to do? Um, uh, not so like much. I would, yeah, I, I love doing it. I still sing like at church every now and then. Yes. Like it's my aunt's wedding scene, so I'm singing for that. Um, but yeah, like, I would never rule it out. But I guess now because I'm focusing on like my melody, like melody car mm. solo stuff. So. Maybe in the future you could yeah. join forces with a gospel choir and, and have like and a massive do... gospel yes, choir back in. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes, that's, 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 I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you're now you've grown up, you know, and you're doing what you're doing, are you happy where you are at the moment? Melody? One hundred percent. Yeah, I think the position that I'm in at the moment is exactly where I want to be. Like I've got the confidence. I'm working on my own stuff. Um, I'm on like the track that I want to be in. So every, everything's looking. Like, like I'm on the right path yes. now. So and your single happy. was released, when was your first single released? Or was it, it just, just it been just, released? Yeah, it's just yes. been released. Yes. So Turn Back the Hurt. Uh, probably recorded it about a month ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The whole sort of journey that I've started at the moment has been really good fun. Um, so yeah, that was released. It's had really good feedback at the moment. So That's good. yeah, it's all exciting. And Turn Back the Hurt, was that, um, again, may I ask, was that a personal journey or was it something mm -hmm. that you, you know, you've, you've developed with, with somebody else? Uh, that one was from the record label, yeah. Yes, fantastic. So again, but just when you sing that though, do you, do you, how do you sort of get yourself in tune with the song? To be honest, like the you'll hear the song later yes. on. Everyone can relate to it. It's a breakup, so you just sort of take it Such in. Like, a shame, where can isn't I? Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't have to relate to it, but we do. The viewers yeah. will. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I guess it's just like you can. Every sort of song someone mm. can relate to in some way, especially a breakup song. So yeah. just sort of take my own experiences and put it into and as you say it. we're going to be hearing that yes. later you can actually play out the show with that so that's going to be great yeah but tell us about so you're, you've just moved to London yeah and you said you moved to London because of the music scene is that quite important for you to be around the sort of the, the people that you feel that can inspire you and maybe direct you with your path of your music career yeah definitely I think the opportunities in London I like obviously I love Birmingham oh, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but the opportunities there are a lot of opportunities in London and because I'm like in the studio and not having like other interviews and stuff it's just a lot so easier no, like that's the direction yes, yeah, so you have but to be Birmingham music scene is actually very good yes it's it is a very awesome. good the music scene. Mm. I used to go there every Did other you? Wednesday they'd have open Mic night. Yeah. Is that where you used to go? There, yeah. Oh, that's right. And I mean, would you, when you when you're going to start gigging? Because at the moment, you're, as you say, you're on working. your journey. You're working towards. You've got your single, and then an album. Yes. Yes. Is that working what you'd like to do? That. Yeah. So um, we've got three tracks. So obviously, turn back the hurt. My man is my second single, and we're we're working on the third mm -hmm. single at the moment, but then we're working towards an album. So. Okay. And is that very exciting for yes, you? Yes, of course. Yes. I'm so excited. It's exactly like what I'm on at the moment. <laughs> and, again, and then I suppose that involves photo shoots and all the things that go with the yeah, video. Have you got something in mind, Melody, that you'd like to do, or do you just sort of are you just sort of going with it at the moment? What for? For the videos and things. Um, I guess like a bit of Motown. I really want to get back to these sort of like Motown. backing it, dancers, yes. yeah. that yeah. sort of. Um, Three piece back and dancers type thing, yeah. but yeah, I want to bring bring it back a little bit. Yes, well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I know. And I would imagine that your family are very proud of you and very supportive. Yes, yeah, exactly. When my nan first heard the track, because it's like in her ear, she was like, "Oh, I love it!" It's oh, like yeah. she she's really excited. Everyone is really excited and really happy. And the support I've got from all my friends and family has been amazing mm. so far. Because obviously, at the early stages, mm. it's like when it's the hardest and most difficult, and everyone's just been really supportive. So, and do you feel great. that you have to work hard? to get to where you want to be yeah 100 percent. if without the focus and without the drive you're you won't really get anywhere you do have to have that because it's like it is really easy to 
sit back and just expect for things to happen but they don't you really have to go for it so mm -hmm. and yeah. I think I think people see the music industry as um, something that you know it's quite easy you know you sing a song you go off stage and that's it but what would you say to people who've got that sort of thing about the music industry thinking it's just quite a simple thing to get into um oh well, I don't would you mm, say it is hard it is a hard thing to get into it's all about your I guess your own personal motivation like if your you, passion your maybe. passion yeah mm. for it like I'm quite passionate so I'm just yes. going to go for it but yeah, if someone see. just expects that it's going to just happen mm. it won't mm. so <laughs> it might you might yeah, be you know. yeah, you know. <laughs> so, and then you'll be starting some gigs you'll be doing some gigs yeah yeah so once um we've got more of a, a repertoire mm. um throw a few like motown and modern covers in there as well we'll definitely be doing some gigs wonderful and will you be coming back to birmingham to do that of course well, yeah of course. i can't uh, not I like, you'll have to come back on and yes, tell us all about 100%. it but wonderful to meet you today thank Love. you so much for joining me thank, thank you, you so and good much. luck with everything thank, thank you. you thanks very much <laughs> So we're just going to take a quick break now, so come back and join me in just a minute. My next guest is Barry Tomes from Gotham Records, an independent record label based here in Birmingham. So Barry, welcome to Copper TV. Hello. Not a stranger to Copper TV, No, I'm not a add. stranger at all. Lovely to see you though today. You too. And to talk about really the record label and the music industry in a whole. So just tell us a little bit about more. Well, you know, you I do. never stick to the script, don't you? No, I know that. Did you know that Alfred <laughs> from Batman was born in Birmingham? No. The I butler didn't. from Batman? No. Absolutely. People assume that I made the Gotham record name because of Batman. I never did, actually. It was just somebody made a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they're connected to Batman. But yeah, Alfred, Batman's butler from Kings Norton in Birmingham. Really? Yeah. There you see. Gotham Records. There you go. So, so, how long have you had Gotham Records, Barry? About 27 years. And you've seen many changes, I would have thought, during that time. It used to time. make money. Yeah, <laughs> used to make money. Remember that? Yeah. Them good old days. Yeah. Mm. A lot of changes, really. I started the label because I'd worked with all the major labels like EMI, RCA, BMG, Virgin, all of those. And I'd had artists signed to all of them over the years. And I quickly realised that when you had a record out, you were the flavour of the month. You could go in and out the building and they sent cars for you and put you on planes. But when your record was no longer out, they didn't talk to you for three months. So, of course, as an artist manager, that's quite frustrating. So there was that and a couple of other reasons I decided to start the label. And when I started the label, I didn't quite know what we were going to do. And uh, I think the first shock was when I recorded my first song. And this is back in 1987. And we recorded a song, cost £12,000. Now, that's quite a lot of money then. Mm. I mean, it is now, but it was yes. a lot then. My sister bought a house for £12,500, a terraced house, so. which she still has, which is worth £85,000. Yeah, so I was going to say that'd be worth a lot more. Yeah. And the cassette that they gave me for yeah. recording a song for £12,000 never seen the light of day. No. Nobody liked the song. Really? Yeah. So does that often happen? You can spend money on, on an artist and then just nothing ever comes of it? Yeah, I've got at least two artists, uh, probably more, but at least two that come to mind that have both cost me just about forty to £50,000 and never made a penny from them. That happens. Mm. I mean, that does happen. Um, that must be more difficult for an independent record label, though, because obviously it's your label, it's your, it's your money, it's your, whereas a bigger company maybe can swallow up that cost, but... As an independent, is it more difficult? Yeah, because it is your 50 grand. I mean, I wouldn't have sold my Range Rover because we lost a deal in Spain and we were worried about losing the master recordings. And I sold my Range Rover to pay for it. And uh, the company in Spain went bankrupt and we never seen them. So I finished up with no master tapes and no Range Rover. That's so not I'd be good. a record company boss. Yes. <laughs> sounds elegant and it sounds good. And it is. I kind of like having a record label, but yeah. I think these days it's more my favourite personal jukebox because if I want to release a record, um, I can release a record within 48, 48 hours now. So how does it work, Barry? Tell the viewers how it, how it actually works. Well, how it used to work when we had record deals was you, as a manager, you'd get the artist a, a contract and then the record company, back in the 70s and 80s, they would pay probably £25,000 advance for a single. And if you're doing an album with them, it could be a quarter of a million pounds, even more, you know. Um, so they would put the money and then you'd spend that money, you'd record the songs, they'd send you around the world on Learjet's and then when the album sold, you found you had no money because it had all been spent on Learjets and going around the world. So the advance sounded great. Yes. You got this money. It sounded really, really good. And you kind of got a quarter of a million pound advance. Um, and you'll often hear now on the X Factor, the winner gets a £500,000 yes, record. Yes, it sounds a, a huge amount of money, yeah. isn't it? They probably, it is. get, they probably get 10 quid because actually everything gets spent on the label. So 
And then the artist would get, I'm saying roughly about a 10% royalty, maybe 12% if you were generous. Michael Jackson would have got 18 to 20%, but he was one of the few that got that sort of royalty. So you lay out the money, you make the recordings, you take the pictures, you do all of the design, and you take all of the risks in that. But unlike a bank, if you said to your bank, I want to make an album, I'm going to spend 30 or 40,000 pounds, if you could persuade them to give you a loan, even if you could and you probably wouldn't, then um, if the album didn't sell any, you'd have to pay about £30,000 plus the interest, so probably £42,000. Mm. With a record label, the term, the actual legal term was a recoupable but non-returnable advance, which meant we would put £50,000 up, we would record an album. If it sold, we got the first 50000 from sales. Uh, if it didn't sell, you didn't pay us back. What a loan. I'd love a bank like that now. Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but I mean, it's, has it changed so much since you started and to where you are now? Well, yeah, record companies don't make money anymore. That's, that's the bottom line. I mean, the big record labels, um, I fear for them in 20 years' time because big record labels now, uh, they still make money by selling the Beatles, a band that broke up 50 years ago, and the Beach Boys' back catalogue and, you know, Neil Diamond's 52 albums or Rod Stewart's 120 albums. So in 10, 20 years' time, they won't have those back catalogues because albums and artists are not so prolific now, they don't make as many, you know, you two bring an album out every three years maybe, whereas, you know, in the 70s you had two or three albums a year. Um, so you, that's how they make money still, by having the back catalogue. At Independent Label, we don't tend to have a back catalogue. I think I've got about a thousand tracks, probably, which is low, because it's a small independent label, but we used to make a lot of money from dance music in the 80s, and when I first stopped my label up, I'd, I'd got a record label, I'd got a name, I'd had a logo designed, designed and I had no, no idea what I was going to do mm. until I went recording my first record and yeah. then we released that record, it made no money. I thought, oh, right, okay, so you open a record label and you lose 15, 20 grand. We then went on to release Dance Product, which made a lot of money. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I made, I th sorry, I made about £47,000 once from a non-hit dance record. From a non-hit? Hit, non-hit, wasn't in the charts. It just got sold all over the world on compilation. I was going to say, how does it make that money then, just by going around the world? Is yeah, that so, other people buying it? Is yeah, that how it makes well, the money? Now you don't. I mean, you see the Now series advertised, I think Now 91's yes. on TV. But um, all the independent labels were released, you know, Best of Dance, Now Dance, Dance Hits, Dance Hits UK. And I could say, say I recorded a song for, I don't know, say £500, I recorded one song, a dance track, very easy to do, computer. Hire a vocalist, give the vocalist a session fee, 200 quid, 500 quid, you've got a song. I would then go to Japan and say, here's a, grand, a brand new track, it's sort of in the dance charts in the UK because we promoted it. And then they said, well, we'd love to put that on our next compilation, we'll give you $2,000. Thank you very much. And the contract was actually a non-exclusive one-use agreement. So they could use it once on one compilation, but it wasn't exclusive. So we could often have the same track on seven compilations in Japan. Really? 15 compilations in Germany. And that's how we made money, because each one would be something like probably £250, £500, $1,000, €2,000. And you add that up around the world in 30 or 40 yes, countries, and before you know it, you're banking money. But now that's, that doesn't happen now? No, somebody came out with that iTunes thing, <laughs> stole all the money. I blame iTunes. But, um, so it doesn't work now. I mean, we, we, we've had to find other ways of earning income because I won't give up my record label. It's a passion that I have. And I love releasing records and I love the buzz of releasing a record. And, and to be fair, whenever my release date is, I know at midnight, it suddenly appears on iTunes. Every single time I've got a release, I will just after midnight, I'll go to iTunes and I'll buy the first copy. Is yeah, you then do? you know it's worked. It yes. means you've found an artist, you yes. love the artist, you recorded a song, you uploaded it to cyberspace, wherever that is, yes. and it came back to you. But did you know that you don't then own that download? Tell did us you about know that? that. Okay. I own the track. Mm -hmm. I put it on iTunes. I buy it from iTunes for 79 pence. And I don't actually own that one I bought. You're only leasing that from iTunes. Do you know that? No. It doesn't I belong didn't. to you. You pay 79 pounds to lease it from them. And they stop you putting on more than five devices. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. But if you go on your iPad and yes. on a phone... phone so, and everything. It's a maximum of five. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you don't actually own your own recording that you've given them to put up there. <laughs> so. There's something a bit wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, like I said, us poor record companies can't, can't afford a decent shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but why do you think...
think there are lots of artists now, they, they put together compilations, don't you? That seems to be quite popular now. Lots of artists, even young bands that have just started, maybe only been going for maybe a year. Yeah. You'll often see them have a collection album come out. Is that just the way to make money? Is that how it works? It, you know, it, it's kidology. It's like the greatest hits mm, album. Yes, the and, greatest And hits, I know the best so of. many artists got the best of and the greatest hits album. And the best of is definitely not the best. And the greatest hits is there's been one record that's kind of interesting and some to know about and the other nine nobody's ever heard of. But if you call it the greatest hits, it's kidology, people buy it. Is that right? Is that EPs are mean? the popular thing, funny enough. You'll yes. find that most bands now were releasing a new EP, five songs. Why release a 13-track album that's a concept that you, you as a writer sat down and went, mm. I've had an idea, this album's going to be about trees and leaves and autumn and, and, and evolution. So you write the songs and each song means something and each track develops. Then you put it on iTunes and somebody can buy track nine. So they, they come in in the autumn of the thing and they don't really know the story. So EPs seem to be the most popular. Yeah, lots of new artists. Mm. I mean, we've had lots of musical artists you know, on mm. cover TV mm. and it's always about EPs. I've got a new EP coming out. I've yeah. got a new EP. So for those yeah. who don't know what EP is, what does EP stand It used stand to say for? extended play. Right. It used to be T-Rex, who I was a big fan of. When you had an A-side and a B-side. Yes. Okay, that was, you always had that because you had two sides. I don't remember side. that. Oh, <laughs> please. Excuse me, viewers, please. Uh, so for the benefit of I Monica, do. who's never heard I of do. an A and a B-side, you had a vinyl, you had an A-side yes. and a B-side. Yeah. Uh, now you don't, you have the release, right. but you have the remixes, because that's another way of making money. Yes. If I release a song and I do 15 remixes, if I've got a fan base of just a thousand people, they will buy all 15 mixes, and each mix counts as a sale towards the chart. Mm. So one person will be buying 15 different mixes. As long as the mixes are different names, they'll count towards the chart. Fantastic. Well, Barry, it's been fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me on Cup of TV today. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me. Um, we'd like to thank Melody and Barry for joining me on Cup of TV and thank you at home for watching. If you'd like to get in touch, you can do so by Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.